cuts out when I cut the replay and then edit it. Let me know. I'm voting. I want to <laughs> I want to watch Mombi stuff. Oh, we also have an Elamir call or we have a Young Living call. So vote. So Kira always has a tea. It's literally the best. Okay, so we have an Elamir chat or Young Living. Uh, so both of them. So we have an Elamir call or Young Living call. Y'all can vote. I'm going to Instagram right now to get the videos. So y'all are going to decide. And I will cut this at this point in the video. I'll re-upload it so it's not going to be me just having bunches of technical difficulties. I wish I could do a poll. Can I do a poll? Let's see. YouTube. Can I do a poll in the chat? Mute. Can I do a poll? Oh, I can't do polls yet. Oh, yes, I can. Create a poll. Yes. Vote here. Young Living. Elamir. Okay. I just, I just did the poll so y'all vote on the poll and let me see if i can share the screen window capture add new source add ellen lc elamir's winning wait what How come I can only see one? Their corporate updates. That's okay. Um, I don't know. I was trying to see the vote, the polls, but I think it just shows who's winning. Can y'all see that there's Young Living as an option too? Because I thought I put it in there, but if there's only one option, then that's dumb. I wish I knew how to do this better. I'm sorry. I feel bad. I'm so bad at this. Okay. Elmir is winning so far. This should be live. I support you, King Dave of the Donuts. I never bloody win things. Oh, I can see it here. Okay. 10 votes. There are both. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. I don't know why I can't see both options on my end, but that's okay. We'll just delete this. Cover your ears, Dave. <laughs> okay, awesome. I think... Sweet, sweet, sweet. We'll give it a few more, a few, we'll give it two more minutes. We're going to turn up the vibes and. Thank you, uh, Snark Crew, for my little candy packet. All right. 11 votes. I think there's only... 11 people in the chat, so. <laughs> we love a good haters don't affect me Zoom rant. <laughs> oh. We haven't done Elamir in a while. I think it's 50 50. Oh. <laughs> Let me end the poll and see where we're at. Y'all vote if you want to vote. Oh, I've got 12 votes. Three of y'all. Vote if you want to. And we'll do the other call in another day. I'll have to break the tie. I don't even know how to see this correctly. Oh, it's literally 50-50 right now. Six people have voted for El Elamir. Six people have voted for Young Living. All right. I'll have to break the tie. 
I don't know. I guess I can't vote on my own poll, which is good. I'm going to vote for Elamir, I guess. And then we'll end poll. We'll just do Elamir tonight. We'll do Young Living tomorrow. If Kira's okay with that. Lots of food today. <laughs> Trying to see where it ends. I should probably just do the light version of YouTube instead of the dark version. Are y'all okay if we just look at it like here on this screen? I just opened it up and I didn't realize I did that. She looks pissed. She looks mad, right? Say something, Van. You're um you're live. Oh my God. Why is her camera falling? Cause she has a standing desk. Just like one of my lives. Am I in? You're in, you've been live. You've, you've. Oh. You've been live. You've been live. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Sorry, if you guys oh saw God. my desk going up and down. I you have did. one of those desk that can adjust in height and I forgot to lock it and so it was taking me down. So happy, happy Tuesday, guys. Uh, I hope you guys all had an amazing Labor Day. If you notice, we kind of upgraded ourselves and made ourselves a little bit fancier than a normal blank screen. So I'm excited to be on today's corporate update call, guys. Definitely go ahead and tag your team. Make sure they're on today's call. Um, this is our weekly update call. I know I was not on yesterday because it was Labor Day. Hopefully you guys had a great time listening to the first kickoff of Mentor Monday with Tuan talking about finding your drive. Guys, we have so many great guest speakers lined up for Mentor Monday. And if you were on that call, I highly encourage you guys invite your team members on because one of the things that I will tell you, Sorry. the secret to our success in 17 plus years of network marketing, it was not the how to's. It was not how to, you know, get in someone's inbox. It wasn't necessarily just about showing up. It was about having the right mindset that would figure out the how to's along the way. And mindset is so powerful and highly looked over because all of us focus on only results. But guys, you can't have better results if you don't increase your mindset and your flow and your philosophy and disrupt the way your old thinking was. Because in order for you to get different results, you gotta have a different mindset. And how do you get a different mindset? You gotta disrupt it. How do you disrupt it? Whether you're watching YouTubes or you're attending events or you're reading personal development, you wanna surround yourself with personal association that is positive, powerful, encouraging, uplifting, and you wanna follow people that have the results that you're looking to mirror. Something that Twan and I were taught a long oh, time shoot. ago. 
is before you decide to follow someone, you need to ask yourself, do they have the lifestyle that you're looking for? Oh, wow. Do they have the relationship that you're looking to mirror? Do they drive the car that you want to drive? Really? Do they live in the home that you're trying to live in? Do they display the leadership style that you want to emulate? Do they have what you are looking for? And when I say those things, guys, it's not based on materialistic things. They don't have to live in a... Don't get me wrong. If you want to live in a mansion, go dream of a mansion. Do you want to drive a Lamborghini? You can drive the Lamborghini. Here's what I will tell you guys what I was looking for when I first got started in this industry. I just wanted to mirror someone that had true residual income that was helping their family. Because when I first got started in this industry, I wasn't married. My husband and I, we met through the industry, but we weren't married. We didn't have kids. My first drive and motivation was I just wanted to take care of my mom. And I wanted to find someone that was already Why doing is that. This appropriate and I wanted to, to be emulate saying mirror as and copy a CEO. and duplicate everything that they were doing because we were always taught that when you want to have the success that you're looking for, go look for the right cat and copy that person, right? And so I would emulate things that they were doing. I watched how they show up. I watched how they dress. I watched how they engage with people, how they interact. I read the books that they told me to read. I showed up to the events that they told me. I feel like this is very much um, something we've heard from so many other <laughs> network marketers. To show up to. And that is how we started gaining perspective and started operating differently. So I encourage you guys, plug into the mindset of the Mentor <sighs> Monday. And here's why I'm going to tell you guys this. Because at the end of the day, you need a new pitch. for me personally, if someone isn't willing to plug in on the internet, whether it's on your phone or through your computer, guys, that shows a lot to the commitment that they're willing to give to a business. And here's why I say that. And this is not to be mean. You guys have it. This is not to be mean, but okay. What? Ready to get yelled at. So much easier than Twan and I had when we first got started in the industry. We had to show up every Thursday. This is so much easier than when Twan and I started. You haven't had a successful launch. There's no marketing department. There's no sales materials. There's no um, produced video for the sales reps. Your machines didn't perform correctly at the beginning. You couldn't open up to customers. Yeah, what are we saying right now? Are you serious? Yes, self-care live stream. Love that, Jenny. Hey, at a training event here in Southern California, wearing a business suit, right? I had to wear a female business suit. I also had to wear, um, you know, um, whatever, button up. Did you also climb uh, up the hill both ways in the snow? That's the same, very same vibe. I'm sure, you know, there was a, an attire that you had to follow. And if you didn't show up that way, they would kick you out of the training. And they would call it the core commitment. And if you didn't show up, this is how bad it was, guys. They would make you feel like you're a loser, right? So if you didn't show up, you didn't physically show up and pay the $20 to do these events. That environment, and I'm not saying it was bad. Guys, I've learned a lot from it. There's good, bad, and ugly in every part of the industry. But what I will okay. tell you, Hope she feels what it did better, was it sticks. pushed me to work harder on myself. It motivated me to do better because it motivated me to say, I want to be better than who I was. This is why I got started in this industry. And so when I tell you guys that as simple as turning on your screen, turning on your phone to dial into a 20 to 30 minute mindset shift Monday, that I will tell you is probably going to be some of the most powerful parts of your progression and growth in this oh industry. And I highly encourage you guys get all of your team members on these calls every Monday. She does not look happy, correct? This, her face looks completely different than it normally does when she is excited and pumped about talking about any kind of opportunity. Like with what she's been pitching in the past. She, her eyes look sad, her face, her like lip, it lips like the downturn looks sad. Today, we're going to bring on guest speakers that are in and out of this industry that have made millions of dollars. And they will tell you the same thing. 
it's not about necessarily just results. It's about the mindset that they gain in the process of becoming a successful person. Tuan has some incredible interviews that are going to be on there. Some amazing guest speakers that we've had experience and knowledge and uh, personal mentorship from. They weren't even a part of our upline support. They were just sideline supports that believed in us before we even saw like ourselves to who we are today. And so I, I speak heavily on this because if any of you guys know who I am, I focus on mindset heavily. And so I highly, highly, highly encourage. So, um, there's a podcast coming out maybe next week or the week after. Um, and it's, I didn't produce it. It's someone else's podcast. And the guest on there is talking about the difference in reframing something and in having true, genuine gratitude and how it's been corrupted by the multi-level marketing industry. It's a really interesting conversation. I was on the back end of it um, today listening to it, but it really um, articulates some of the problems that we have with just mindset at all costs separating your separating your mind from your intuition and how you feel about something the dangers that that can hold for people it's it's a really interesting conversation and i think that it speaks to and it debunks some of these perspectives that you hear from these mlm ceos and mlm top pyramid performers I heard you guys take advantage of what we're putting in place <laughs> I pulled over just to say that female suit. So glad you clarified that or we would have been so confused. So first thing I want to go ahead and talk about, let's talk about Canada guys. Who's excited to the fact that we are literally launching a month early on October one, um, for us to go into Canada and be able to share our incredible product and offer our amazing opportunity that is officially launching on October one. We are having a Canada call tomorrow, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. How are you going to launch in Canada when you couldn't even keep up with the product you needed to produce here? What? Time, uh, 4 p.m. Mountain Time and... Uh, 5 p.m. Central. Sorry, I'm trying to hit all the time zones for you guys. But just know 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we are doing a Canadian call. And not only are we going to be able to invite prospects on to be able to talk about the opportunity, share the vision of what we're doing, um, talk about our product, but also be able to start talking about the expectations of what to do as we gear towards launching into Canada. Now, I do want to give this disclaimer to anyone that doesn't have any Canadian connections, please do not stress yourself out. Please do not go out there and try to go find some Canadians if you don't have any connections. The biggest encouragement that Twan and I have always done in our career is that you want to focus building in your own backyard. If you happen to have Canadian reps or possible prospects that you know personally that you can call and get them on this call, absolutely take the time and invite them on the line. But if you are someone that has no connections to Canada, please do not stress yourself out and sit there and say, who can I talk to in Canada and have that FOMO feeling like you're missing out on something. Most of the time, Assemble the I will moose tell brigade, you guys, yes. you miss out on opportunities that are right in your backyard. So when Mary Kay and Melissa can speak to this, you were not allowed to promote in other countries unless you were a national sales director, from what I understood. And Melissa, correct me if I'm wrong. It's interesting that in Monet, and maybe it's not different in Monet, but it's interesting in Elamir that they're allowing the reps at any level to promote in any other country. I'll just pitch the opportunity to a Canadian goose if I see one. <laughs> Sky. <laughs> oh, I have to show you the artwork that Sky did for um, Young Living. We'll, watch, we'll look at it at the end. If you're trying to chase this FOMO feeling of capturing an opportunity that maybe not necessarily is in your network yet, you want to organically build this business. If you have connections to Canada, obviously take advantage of it. If you are a brand partner that has no connection to Canada, pay no attention to it. The way I look at it is in every conversation, you can always do the subtle question by the How, listen, here's my question. How are they supposed to unhear that? Because if you are getting in the ground floor opportunity, you're a lowly pro 
um, rep over here. Then if you get someone early on in another country who's going to be the top of that country, doesn't that increase your potential to make more money? So why would they unhear that and say, don't worry about it if they don't know anyone in Canada? That's just... Am I crazy? By the way, do you know anybody in Canada that would be open to this incredible product or this opportunity? If they say no, move on guys, because I don't want you to spend your time, waste your energy where there is no productivity or activity for you because there is so much room for growth in general that we definitely don't want you to get distracted. So again, if you are not focused or if you don't have any- How is the audio for y'all? Can I turn anything up for you? I have room to turn up uh, van and I have room to turn down music. Let me know. Buddy in Canada, don't worry about it. But if you are focusing on building into Canada, we do have a special call being conducted tomorrow at 3 p.m. Specific standard time. Please grab the Zoom link from one of your upline um, support line. I believe I missed that there's Zoom a link. flyer I'm floating bummed. around somewhere. We are going to also send an email out for you to be able to grab the Zoom link from that email. So please stay tight after um, I do this corporate call. You will receive a corporate email with all the details. And guys, I will tell you, there's a lot of exciting things happening behind the scenes tomorrow. I know everyone was asking, Van, when are we going to be able to oh, the maple uh, hear about your QEEG brain scan? Guys, I have my official appointment with Dr. Hill tomorrow. He's going to go ahead and go Dr. through Hill. the results of what came about from my QEEG Different Dr. Hill than doTERRA, right, Last mommy? Thursday. I know everybody's anticipating and excited. LaCour is excited, guys. We talked to our corporate team today at LaCour, and they're like, I'm so excited to see the results and hear about what you guys went and did. And I know that Tuan is dying to show you guys the clips because he wants to show off my mushroom cap, right? I always make fun of it. Like I had to put a mushroom cap on and he likes to embarrass me with videos of me acting weird with my eyes closed. So we're going to be able to put all that content together and put it up on social media so that you can have that information to share with your possible prospects. And also just for yourself to validate the things that we're doing and the doctor that we are planning on bringing on board, we are literally so close to finalizing everything. Once the, the, the dotted line is signed, we will then go ahead and make the announcement of who we're bringing on board to start the scientific board, to be able to start weekly trainings on ingredients, about technology, be able to do some Q and A's and be able to answer Shouldn't you have done this before you launched? questions that come from the background of our Welcome product back, or Six. the ingredients, the long-term benefits, our technology, shouldn't, we're gonna be able to- Shouldn't they have, um, <clears throat> shouldn't they have hired this person before they launched? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm very curious. Because is it not a little late to be in September after you've launched in July to bring on a scientist, doctor person to give training? Maybe it's not. Who knows? I don't know. To do all of that on a weekly basis on our corporate um, Elamir page. So make sure you're following that and make sure you're promoting that to your new team members. And we will do once a week training and um, information, information sessions on our wall once everything is finalized and we can make the public announcement of who's coming on board for our scientific board and be able to be that voice for you guys. So that when you're out there and you're building in the field, you have that capability to share um, and be able to validate what you are expressing to your network. Um, the next thing I want to go ahead and talk about, guys, really simple. Today's oh, call. Speaking of weird, like little stuff, you know that video that Julie Joe did about um, Tony Van Schoik and um, that's that group of people who don't believe in taxes or there's like a contingent of people. Well, my um, my spouse knows about that group um they're uh quacky and uh so i was trying to see if he would be willing to look over some of that because inadvertently someone's going to get sucked into it so i'm gonna ask julie joe if it's okay to to kind of pick up where she left off but kitty has taken over my office chair <laughs> 
is for us personally, we got a lot in the works behind the scenes. I know I shared with you guys that last week we are working on our customer model. Please know that we are getting closer and closer to finalizing all the details, running the numbers, because we already know if you guys want to know the stats of what's going on, our customer sales since turning on the website is insanity right now, guys. What is it? What I mean by that is for every one brand partner since August 16th, there are seven to eight customers coming in comparable to recruiting which is amazing because what is that proving to you guys as a market is that our product is so sticky that it outweighs our opportunity. Now, some of you guys might be going, no, that's bad, Van. The opportunity should be more important. No, I disagree no, with that. Mindset. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, because I believe that when you can establish a company that has a solid product line that people are willing to purchase regardless of an opportunity or not, that's where you build a solid foundation for continual growth year in, year out. Because when you look at all of the great opportunities in the market, I'm just going to name list some, some companies like Prove It, Modere. They have solid customer base. They have huge businesses that continue to grow because of why they have satisfied customers they that have, are purchasing the product oh more God. than people are participating in the opportunity. And when you look at Prove It's numbers, if you look at a company as a whole, they literally doubled their business. In okay, less I'm not trying to say Modere is any better. It's one aspect of Modere that's different is the affiliate part of it. I'm not saying Modere is great. I'm not. I'm saying that they have an opportunity that Elamir doesn't even have or even prove it doesn't even have. Far be it for me to platform Justin Prince. I'm just saying that that's a factor. And that doesn't necessarily mean anything it just means that they, they do make it easier for people to actually be customers in two yes sticky. Years she did because say that they had people coming in selling on social media they have more customers coming on board than they have distributors and that is the way you want to build this business because when you have satisfied users consumers that are absolutely loving our product that is what's going to create stability in your long-term residual income because the name of the game in network marketing it isn't about launch income that's just the very beginning it's exciting it's great but what we all wanted was longevity and residual income. And when you have a product that works and people are absolutely loving the results and we continue to add more to that through time and having a disruptive technology, you know for a fact that this is being built on something solid. And so that uh, brings me to my topic today. That I How can you speak about longevity when you've been open for two months? You open in July and August and we're not even to the middle of September. What do you even have a leg? Why do you even have a leg to stand on when we're talking about longevity? I don't understand. I want to talk about. I didn't purposely. I purposely didn't invite a leader on today because I just kind of wanted to go back to the basics. We're getting and go yelled back at. The roots of having a talk with the field. I know, guys. We are literally sixty days after launching. We are doing incredible things. If you don't know this, us as a company, we are on track to bare minimumly hitting twenty million dollars in revenue by the end of twelve months as we continue to track the way that we're going. And I know we're gonna be bigger than that, but I'm just basing it on the current numbers that if we continue to go the way that we're going, we will bare minimally be a $20 million company by the end of our first 12 months in business, which is exciting and incredible for you guys because that is the reflection of all the hard work the, the things that you guys are doing in the field, the, the networks that you have brought in, the customers that you've brought on board, the people that are loving our product, the people that are participating in our opportunity. You guys are the reason behind the success of Elamir and we don't take that lightly. This is why we fight so hard. We work aggressively behind the scenes. We listen to the field. We wanna make sure that you're being heard. We wanna make sure that the decisions that we're making are supporting exactly what you guys need out in the field in order for you to- You know, far be it for me to, um, to say anything, but don't you think that people in the field need products to sell? I mean, wouldn't that be the number one issue to address? Wouldn't you want to support the people in the field and the products that they're trying to sell with um, compliant sales material and not have them have to make all the sales material themselves and make non-compliant videos promoting a product? Night, Melissa. <laughs> feel empowered, respected, appreciated, and valued here at Elamir. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to have this personal one-on-one -on -one talk with you guys We're because at the end that. of the day, I want to go back to the roots, going back to the basics of what Elamir is. And I will tell you guys, there has been a lot of amazing things that have come in less than 60 days with our company. 
Um, one of the things that I want to talk about is the fact that we're doing an Icon 6 and above retreat in Las Vegas at the amazing penthouse, Allure Penthouse. If you look it up, I know a lot of the Icon 6 and above currently, they're putting oh, it on their walls. They're, they're recruiting their team, the people that want to run for Icon 6 that want to be a part of that private retreat. All you have to do is get yourself to Vegas and Elamir Corporate will cover everything else when you're there for the- All you have to do is fly yourself to Vegas and then we'll cover everything else. <laughs> okay weekend it is the weekend of october 20th taxable to the 23rd. trip um i think you fly in on the 21st Deferred income you leave on the 23rd the, don't quote me on that i just know it's that weekend friday to sunday um when you You're get the there we will make sure everything else is covered for you take care of you guys we're gonna have a blast and of course the promotion for people that You're don't go icon six right maybe you're new maybe you don't really know how to build yet and you're like well i don't know if i can participate in that promo but Swan and i went through a separate promotion for anybody that loves to go get customers that love to go out there and share the opportunity the top two customer getters for the month of september we will personally fly you out to southern california California and spend the weekend with us and the top two recruiters oh. in September will also get the same perks and benefit and so we just want to give you guys a huge thank you and we just want to show you guys love Why and support is spoiling spending for the time with the CEO and be able to give you guys the opportunity win. to not only get to know us as people but you be able to also meet our chemist the creator and the formulator of our products and our technology the ones that the one that is going to continue to create more innovative products for us to release through time and so we want you guys to have that ability to spend some quality time with us but also be able to ask any questions from a formulation standpoint and so no he's not going to give away future product ideas he's not going to tell you any of that so please mark that off of your list of questions but yes he will definitely take the time to explain to you his passion and his purpose behind why he's doing what he's doing and so we're excited about those two promotions and uh, one thing i will tell you guys the most amazing thing i will share with you guys that i absolutely oh, love doing Christina. at the end of the night because if you guys know how Twan and I work, we work into late hours and then we like to decompress, whether it's watching a TV show or my new favorite thing is getting on TikTok and watching all of you guys doing TikToks. And it's incredible. Oh and I God. definitely want to give a shout out to Shannon and Brandon. I know they did a TikTok challenge last month to get you guys comfortable in front of a, uh, a camera, um, to get yourself out there, to get creative, to have fun, to be able to engage and go out there and just do consistent activity towards building your business. And here's why I want to talk about the TikTok challenge and why I respect and appreciate Shanna and Brandon for pushing that forward and making it easy for you guys by providing the content, the sound bite. All you had to do was go copy it. And I love that you guys are supporting one another on there. And I know there's for other reasons to get you guys to a thousand followers, to be able to put a link in your bio. I get all that, but here's what I will tell you guys. So they're following each other who are other distributors in Elamir to get them to a, a thousand so that you can put a link in your bio. So you don't have real followers. You have your other reps following you. So then TikTok is going to say, oh, you're a rep. You produce Elamir content. You want to be shown to other Elamir reps. Oh, uh, okay. You know, I love anti-MLMers. I could care less if any anti-MLMers followed me on Instagram. I like that they do. The whole thing is the more anti MLMers that follow you on Instagram, the more that your stuff gets shown to anti MLMers. And ideally, if you're trying to get your content to be shared or seen by people who are not in already like the anti MLM creators or in the anti MLM community, having that weighted against you in terms of how many people follow you, everything speaks to the algorithm, which is fine. But trying to i mean youtube is a little bit better in that terms but again if you already like anti mlm stuff on youtube you're gonna get shown other anti mlm stuff and it's hit or miss whether people can find it you'd want to you want to tag it specifically differently oh my god i also i couldn't say it because i was in the shower but do you think the thing about not contacting people in Canada that you don't already know to recruit has anything to do with like avoiding exposure to bad publicity? Yep, probably so. I, and again, Mary Kay used to only let national sales directors recruit in other countries. It was a like a view type of thing, a making sure that they're represented correctly. So I think that's a really good point, Ginny. This is why our again, please don't take what I said out of context. I'm saying it specifically to this. When you have a bunch of people within Elamir and they're all of the thousand people who follow you, it becomes difficult to get your stuff shared and seen 
by people who may want to buy your product, even though it breaks the agreement with TikTok to promote an MLM product on their platform. Company is so heavily focused on helping you guys learn social media. So guys, I come from a old school background of network marketing. You know, Tuan and I, we've been in this industry for a very long time. And we built businesses by going into living rooms. And when it, the oil, like guys, the well always runs dry in that mechanism, mechanism, because when you run out of people to talk to, how we had to get more leads was we either had to purchase them. We did that. Or we used to call it pound the pavement, right? When you feel like you ran out of customers to sell with to, or ran out of recruits to recruit into your business, you don't quit a business. Some people are taught to go quit a business when that happens, right? Not hating on anyone. I'm just saying that that's what I heard was taught was when you run out of leads and when you run out of recruits, you normally want to jump ships or do something different. Hey, if that's the mechanism that people do, not hating on it, that's the style. You we are were back then, hating on it. You run out of contacts and you run out of sales. You better go pound the pavement or go buy some leads. And what does that mean? Pound the pavement was when we were weirdos that we would st- to anyone three feet in front of us, we would talk to them. And we were the weirdos at outdoor shopping mall, Starbucks that would say, hey, you look like a sharp person. Are you oh open my to an gosh, opportunity? Kira. That's what we had to learn to master to say and stop being weird. And we'd be like the stalkers hiding around a bush trying to attack someone at an outdoor mall while they're just hanging out with their wow, family, you know, Sky. having a shopping day. And we're stalking them in the corner, hoping to get their phone number to add them to our list of leads to possibly one day turn them into a recruit or a customer. That's what Tuan and I used to do. And then we got a little bit smarter and we had a little bit more money. And we said, hey, instead of pounding the pavement, let's just go buy some leads. Those are easier. We had to get on the phone with these people, call a random stranger and say, hey, you opted in to learn about an opportunity. Are you still open to that? Can you imagine how many times we got hung up on or how many times we got cussed out on? People telling us, don't ever F and call me again. Block my number. Guys, this is why Tuan and I have such strong mental strength towards no's and rejections oh because those are the things that we had to do back then to build our business. The beautiful thing that you guys have today that is amazing and also can be a curse is we have social media where you can literally turn on your phone, turn on a social media platform. A and religion all is you creator have to base, learn yeah. to do is become consistent in posting That's content crazy, Jenny. and eventually figuring out your brand of what you stand for to start attracting the people that you're looking to work with. And why is this so powerful to me in my head and what clicked it for me so that when we started Elamir, we, t- we wanted a social media driven platform. Here's why. Guys, it made total sense when I started stalking these top leaders that do social media, right? I'm following their TikToks, I'm getting on their Instagram, I'm following their Facebook reels. I love to stalk people to learn from them, right? And what I saw was, you would think these number one sellers, these number one recruiters, you go to their video, I was thinking like, oh my gosh, they probably have millions of views. They probably have like hundreds of thousands of people following them. And then when I go to their video, they have two, three, 4,000, that's a lot of views, 5,000 views. But when you're thinking number one seller, you're thinking a million views, right? Because you think these big numbers. But when that's I'm looking because at these they're not sellers, necessarily they're like good at views, a thousand oh views, God. you know, 500 views here, 200 views there. Just because you have make a lot of money in your multi-level marketing company doesn't mean that you are good at marketing it on social media. It doesn't. I will show you an example. Jessica, um, she's Auntie Leshy on Instagram, has a smaller following, and she regularly gets uh, four, five, six, seven thousand views on her reels because she's super smart about it. And she's talking about these people, and they're. I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. Maybe a video flopped and there's like 150 uh, views there. Hey, 150 views is cool to me because I'm not a big TikToker. But I will tell you this. It didn't click in my brain until I realized- Julie Joe has, I think, almost 80,000 fo- oh, No, she's almost at 100,000 followers on, um, on TikTok. So <laughs> go and watch people who are good at TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. I mean, it's- not necessarily me, but there's lots of people in the community that can show you how to do it. And and I'll just show you a wrong way, in my opinion, to do it. Emily Favre from Beachbody exploits her kid for views on TikTok. And she has 1.2 million followers on TikTok. Maybe more. Here, let me see. It's <sighs> making me mad. Emily's blocked me, so let me try. Oh, man. Uh, 
Okay, Emily Bobber. Ugh. Oh, I'm sorry, 3.8 million Where's followers. And the things that... I don't know. What they do to their kids is just horrible. Realize as I was scrolling through all their stuff, there's hundreds to thousands of video of their stuff in between jokes, in between, you know, inspirational things, in between cooking videos, in between craft videos, whatever your identity is, right? In between all those things that identify who you are as a person so they can get to know you. They insert a product video, they insert an opportunity video. And maybe that video doesn't gain that much traction, but here's where it clicked. If that one video got you one sale, but you had 500 videos all running at once, that could get you 500 sales for the month from a one-time content video that you dropped maybe six years ago. That's when it started clicking in my brain, like, holy cow, now I understand, respect, and appreciate the power behind social media. Here's another example. Any of you guys love Stranger Things? I know my husband, I, I love it. I just, sorry guys, whether it's because I'm tired from working, this last season, I did not finish all the episodes. I keep falling asleep every time I turn on Stranger Things, but anybody know the song, Running Up the Hill? Right? If you guys know, drop a yes in the comment box if you know that song, Running Up the Hill. I can't tell you guys I'm annoyed by it because my husband listens to it all the time. But that song, Running Up the Hill, you can look this up. She created that song back in the 80s. It gained zero traction. Zero traction. She published it, put it out there, right? Didn't make any money off no. of it. Then all of a sudden, in the 2000s, 2022, or I don't know when Stranger Things dropped that episode that has the song in there. Probably 2021 or 2022. I don't know. I don't follow it completely um because i don't know when the seasons drop i just why know when my you... husband makes me sit down and watch netflix why are you why are you using this as an example if you don't remember any parts of the example look i know i have technical difficulties on my channel i get it i don't really have a leg to stand on personally this stuff frustrates me especially coming from a ceo if you're all of these people are making you millions of dollars and you don't have notes. It looks like you're winging it. The song, I thought the song was huge too. You get, you get Miss Bush out of your mouth. But I will tell you guys, if you look up that song, Running Up the Hill, she recorded it back in the 80s and gained zero traction from it. Oh. Can you guys imagine? She probably thought, man, I flopped that song. Are we serious? Okay. Oops, Google. All right. Okay. Um. It's fine. We'll just. Nineteen eighty-five was used as a theme song for the nineteen eighty-six BBC One children's drama serial Running Scared. In two thousand two, a remix featuring newly recorded vocals premiered during that year's Summer Olympics, used closing ceremony, and entered the UK top ten for one week at number six. Um, Stranger Things. Upon its original release, running up that hill... Look, look, look. She has no idea what the flippity flop she's talking about. Upon its original release, original release was 1985, running up that hill, reached number three on the UK singles chart and number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100 in the United States. Ma'am! Are you serious right now? You know what? You can say all you want. Oh, you're just being too hard on her. You know, she probably just got it mixed up. This is one of the issues that continues to be frustrating. 
we're supposed to accept these comparisons and the stories that they tell us on these calls. And then we find out the information is false. So I don't know what to say. It's frustrating. And then you could say, oh, well, it's a song. It's not scientific data. It's not talking about the product. If they're going to lie to promote a story that pr that pushes their idea forward about what she's trying to talk about, what at what point am I supposed to trust anyone at Elamir? Now, could she have made a mistake? Why didn't she prepare for this call? Literally, how long did that Google search take us? 30 seconds? I heard that Metallica song was a flop too. <laughs> Dave. You know. Sorry. Y'all can see my lid from my keyboard. <sighs> I spent all this time. I created it and I didn't make a single dollar off of it. You didn't make a single dollar off of it? How much money do you make when it gets into the top uh, billboard? Number three in the UK sales chart. How much money do you get for that? How much money do you get when it is uh, US uh, number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100? How much money do you get for that? I'm trying to read it. I'm trying to think like maybe I'm wrong. The song was ranked number three among the tracks of the year for 1985. The single had sold 771,568 uh, copies in the United Kingdom after 1994. And with 165,762 of those sales in 2022. The song was included in the list, the story of NME in 70, mostly seminal songs at number 25 for the two tw 2022 list. The timing was not right for that song until this world famous Netflix series called Stranger Things, picked up the song and had it played in a scene of her running up a hill. And guys, today, 2022, that artist is collecting $250,000 a week on replays of this song because it's being plastered everywhere. It's being played multiple countries. She's making residual income of $250,000 a week off of a song that flopped back in the 80s, but now is relevant today because it just fell into the current time where it was picked up by something popular, the timing was right, and now she is smooth sailing with a million dollars a month in residual income off of one song that she did back in the 80s. So why am I sharing this and why am I giving a huge emphasis? Why are you sharing this factually incorrect story? Tell us. Emphasis, because when I started understanding the power of social media, that's why we decided as a whole entire company, we wanted you guys to operate off of social media because we didn't want you guys to fall into the trap that Twan and I fell into that when we ran out of leads, we ran out of recruits, we pound the pavement, we were the weirdos hiding behind bushes. We don't want you hiding behind bushes. We don't want you to be hung up on. We don't want you to be cussed out on. We don't want you to pay for leads. When you can literally turn on your social media and just copy the content that they already have set up, outlined for you guys. This is why they aggressively worked behind the scenes before we launched this company, because they wanted a platform for you to utilize and duplicate and be able to copy until you became confident enough on your own to go out there and build your own content. Are you this is why we do what we do. Mentor Monday is designed to help build your mindset so that you can confidently. I mean, I will just tell you this. I know lots of people have different feelings about door to door sales. I don't have any feelings about it. Um, my dad, I, I guess I have positive feelings about it. When you do door-to-door -door sales correctly, you have to get a special like license from the city that you wear so that you're allowed to go door-to-door. -door. It's a very difficult job. You do get yelled at. It's hard to talk your way 
when you're actually selling good products to someone, I, again, I don't want to start an argument. I know there's some unethical door to door businesses. It takes very like much a talented salesperson to do that job. And to say like, it's either we're, you know, okay, we're not going to train you. We're not going to teach you how to get leads. I mean, when I was in Mary Kay, maybe this was, uh, I get this was probably a wrong thing to do, but at least I went to the principal first. I didn't contact any teachers. I said, this is what I want to provide. This is what I want to offer. This is the value I'm going to give. Um, everyone got samples. Everyone got a thank you. It was like, I, I know I'm trying to explain it in a positive way. I didn't harass anybody. I didn't. So the 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 person protecting like the privacy of the teachers, um, again, I, there's ways to get leads. Not that I want to say like prey upon teachers. Um, I'm saying that she's not describing this mosquito. Ugh. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. She's just making me mad and. Again, it's a weird thing because it's like, I feel like I'm not making very good points and the stuff that happened, you know, last week, it makes me stop and think like, oh crap, you're just doing bad again. Ugh. We do the day in and day out content that is being done through the TikToks Academy, the Reels Academy that they have set up on Facebook. All you have to do is literally go in there and you just have to commit to being consistent. I will tell you guys, if you look up Jesse Lee Ward, she is a top earner at Prove oh It. My when God. she launched Prove It as a team, you know what she committed to doing? 700 lives in a row. She did 700 days of lives. I'm not saying go live for 700 days. That's not what I'm saying. The moral behind what she did was she committed to going live and being consistent for 700 days straight when she decided to launch her business in the company that she currently represents. And today, Jesse oh, Lee is the number excellent. one income earner. She came three years after the company had launched because they always think like, oh, you have to get in at the beginning to succeed. No, guys, some of the most mega earners in Elamir she have had not a huge even downline. arrived in the company yet. You never know when your next top earner is going to join your business. You never know when that person's going to even enter. You don't even know how they're going to enter. Uh, but I will tell you guys that the upper advantage that you have is that the more consistent you are on social media, the more your content is being seen. You don't know the timing of someone's life that they let me let me explain something to everybody watching this. If you are talented at sales, if you're talented at marketing and you're going to strictly grow your business through social media, OK, you have to have a certain skill set at trending, uh, trending things and not only creating trending things because Van is describing your TikTok hitting a million a million uh, views as one for one conversion to sales. And that's not the case. You could have something that people watch and they say, oh my gosh, this is, this is so cute. I love it. Like scroll by or they share to their stories. They forget to like it. It's a different thing <clears throat> to create something that gets people to follow and to then buy something from you. It's a whole different level of stuff. And Jessie Lee Ward, when she was in her third company, she come she came from um slumber parties, I think, and then she went to Modair. So she had her team, then she took her team to Modair. And then she said she only took eight people to or whatever, fourteen people to prove it. But you're telling me nobody from her former downline joined her? Or any of the people who followed her? What? We don't even know what's going on. We have no idea. Oh man, I'm not looking at the live chat. I'm looking at the top chat again. Gosh dang it. We don't even know. They may turn on their TikTok and the For You page pops up and it happens to be a video you did two years ago. But it's relatable today because at the time of that person, they needed to see that and they decided to get started with you. Unlikely. And that might be the next mega earner that ends up in your organization. Unlikely. But how will you ever get to that point 
if you never become consistent in anything that you ever do and stick to the plan and follow through. And because she was remember terminated. This, every top earner had she to be She was terminated beginner. from slumber parties every too. number one income earner had to be zero income earner. Every pro athlete had to be an amateur. Every company Not had to be a startup before it became a legacy. So you got to decide when do you want to buckle down and commit to being consistent because through consistency, you will build confidence. You will gain traction. You will understand what your market is. You will understand who, who you are because you don't know unless you make mistakes, you plan to review and you take a U-turn, you know, you, you got to go around the cinder block that may be blocking you. You got to figure it out. But Cinder I will tell block. you guys, if you don't stay consistent, you're never going to give yourself that time and availability to be able to discover what is your purpose and how do you want to give that message to the world no, through not social purpose. media? Because I believe in not purpose, not message. No, this is a job. It's sales. It's pure commissionable sales or commissions based off of your team. It would be a much more truthful talk from Van. If she said growing a, a commission only a sales independent contractor business takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort, and you have to give it enough time potentially to see any fruits from your labor. Some people see it early. Most people see it two, three years in. And those two, three years in, it costs you monthly a lot of money to access your potential commission or to access the um the promotion ranks within the company and what does that look like cost wise well multiply the monthly cost by 12 then by three if you're okay with that cost that's one thing if you're not give yourself six months if you don't like what you see maybe it's better if you're a customer you know social media because it gives you endless exposure to networks that you would have never known had you not put out your content and stay consistent on it now i decided to social media where there's trolls and bullies guys at the end of the day this is the same advice i give our kids that i'm going to give to you guys it doesn't have to be the truth as long as you don't believe it whatever someone writes on your social media page trust me guys i'm being bullied left and right you guys know go just go type in elamir on youtube and there's apparently like pictures of me being like plastered all over the place right i mean we're not making her look any kind of way. We're not making her look distorted. We're not making her look um, purposely funny to try to discredit her physically. We're talking about the sales pitches. We're talking about the, the inaccurate and factually incorrect narratives that you're sharing. And you're doing it to personally profit. You know, as someone who doesn't want to be like labeled as a, bu a bully, because I was a bully, I mean, I was a bully. I, I got bullied growing up. Um, I, it's kind of important to try to at least stay in the lane of critiquing what's said, critiquing behavior, especially when what you say and your behavior falls underneath the umbrella of unethical business practices, unethical recruiting tactics. And misinformation. Yeah, and it, again, it's not fun to get videos made about you or even one video. And she has probably hundreds at this point. I know it's not fun for her. Now, the thing is, there is a there's a, an ability to say she talked about it with her kids. Um, it doesn't have to be the truth if you don't believe it. There, I think that's such an amateur way to look at it. Is listen to what's said and you don't have to listen to everything. But from a marketing perspective, you should hear what the market is saying about your product. As a CEO, you should. And if there's truth in that, pivot. You could pivot at any time. Van could pivot at any time. They could hire, instead of paying millions of dollars for a doctor who to train the team, they could hire, I don't know, 50 people for their compliance department and start keeping their sales reps on task and compliant with regards to health claims. 
and medical claims. Hey, Tish, what's up? Fancy meeting you here, Tish. I don't care. I never watch any of it, and I don't even pay attention to it because I know who I am as a person. I you know what we do in the company I work for? The marketing company I work for? You listen to what people are leaving reviews on your company websites or wh wherever the platform is that you are receiving reviews. We read every single one of them and we resolve what we can or we put it in front of the, the, the owner and say, what happened in this situation? Give us some details so we can go back and have a conversation. Or if the owner or CSR doesn't, isn't uh isn't aware of it they can freaking fix it you don't just stick your head in the sand from a marketing perspective and hope that people stop talking shit about you <sighs> still parked up my van i know what i stand for so whatever people are saying about me because they're jealous or you know they're they're sad inside and they want to project their sadness no, onto other uh, people no. It has nothing to do with who I am. Okay. I will tell you specifically what is hard to handle about Elamir. When you villainize traditional uh, medicine and say, instead of this, use this and all of this for Elamir. Sorry. Elamir, you're claiming that it can fix your anxiety. It can fix your depression. It can fix your... Um, tension it can fix your migraines it can fix your adhd it can fix you know your freaking autism you're talking about things that are actually impacting people and you're making claims about a product that you cannot make and you're villainizing traditional healthcare, traditional medicine to sell something that is one of the biggest points of contention i have you not controlling your reps and and encouraging them to be compliant. And when they're not compliant, terminating their contract, that is number two point of contention I have. I don't, I don't know what else, I, I don't, I mean, I know what else to say. I just, it's, it's, it, it is frustrating trying to speak out against some of these companies and the CEOs always always characterize people who have an issue with them taking advantage of others as haters, bullies, etc. Yes, Tish, if you want this link, um, let me ask you, I'm sure it's fine. Kira, if you're still listening, can I send this link to Tish? as a person because I don't care what their truth is. Their truth has nothing to do with who I am as a person. I made me. I'm the person that read the books. I'm the person that showed up. I'm the person that journaled. I'm the person that has made it through all of the tests that I've been put through in my life. I know who I am as a person. So why would I ever allow someone else to dictate who I am, how I operate, what I do, and what my family's going to get? I because there are, there are strict rules. It, the FTC has laid down about deceptive recruiting practices, deceptive income practices, it, um, health claims that you cannot make, that the FDA says you cannot make health claims of, about supplements because they have not gone through the testing required to say, yes, you claim this, you claim this does this, and there has been a trial to say, yes, that does that. That's why. It's fraudulent, in my opinion. Okay, I'll, um, Tish, I'm sending it to you right now just so I don't forget. Hold on. Gosh, dang it. Um, Tish. Echo, echo. Message. All right, send it to you, Tish. 
refuse to give anyone that power because I am the one that survived my worst days. So I get to deserve <laughs> the rewards that come with it. And so if, as long as you don't believe what these people are saying, they don't have to be your truth. They don't have to matter. You can just ignore block. There are actual measurable truths out there. Um, murdering people is wrong. Um, negligence is is wrong on some level lying is wrong claiming something can do something that hasn't met the standards for people being able to say that is wrong it's not just us saying wow you wear um shirts and we hate people who wear shirts so we hate you that's not what we're saying it's not what we're saying and move along right that's all i always tell people move block and move along guys the world is full with positive people there's going to be trolls they're going to be a-holes that you're going to come across just expect it jim Rohn says it if you expect it when it happens then you just go oh i encountered one of those people that i knew i was going to encounter you so don't we're never we're people. never going to be able to get through to van we're never going to get be able to get through to any of the reps because they're receiving this information from the very top to ignore block and move on with your day man this video freaking sucks i think i need a break what the hell Man. And if they if they actually gave a flippity flop about their sales team, meaning their volunteer sales force, they would have given them approved company printed materials or at least company exported materials in PDF format that had been approved like that had been written in a, and looked over by their legal team to say, "Yes, you can say all of this." And it wouldn't be that stupid don't say migraine say this because that in itself is not compliant because people looking on the side are going to say oh so while i can't say migraine i can say this well that means that it helps with migraines quick someone make a joke <laughs> Well, uh, say what they need to say and make it become your i am going to take a break i'm because i'm not going to cry i'm not going to get upset People doing crappy stuff is like people exploiting others and then saying it's just upsetting. What the hell? Night, Jenny. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I hope you have a good night, Jenny. Tish, I would love to see what you think about this video i'm gonna finish it i just tish is so eloquent and spicy and pointed and she always brings up something that i'm like oh my god yes every time and she's so pleasant to listen to and she doesn't cry like i do on a live Ugh. van stops to search her memory for what other song that was huge was a bus came up with van halen to jump Fizzle sticks that's hilarious. It's not an accident. It's probably a reaction to people leaving and stopping the rumblings of others. Yep. I've seen five minutes and it's a wreck. It is. It's just uh, Tish. Um, Van thought that uh, what's the song called? Running up that hill was a flop, and that's why it's so inc it's so incredibly important to uh wait out or whatever like you can get a return on your investment even if it's decades after the fact or something like that and running up that hill like top the charts in the uk and in the us so i don't know what she was thinking uh, i don't know how to not get upset listening to this stuff i wish like i could not 
Loki put his bike in front of the front door yesterday because dew gathers on it when it's under the veranda. It rained during the night. It's now completely soaked. Oh, no, Lynn. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Tish. And it literally, we looked up the information on Google within 30 seconds. And it completely was the opposite of what Van was saying. I mean, someone, please, at least review her notes before she goes live. All right. Oops. Buckle up. I don't believe it. It's never the truth, right? And so I want you guys to know this is why I'm heavily encouraged you guys to participate more um, into social media. If you're not comfortable, trust me, I'm not either. <laughs> I'm going to do more TikToks. I've oh, done no, a couple Lynn. TikToks that did go viral here and there. And it was just because I was sharing I love that, business Tish. tips. But I will tell you guys, I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure out the sound bites and then trying to type in all this stuff. I'm not the best at it. I know I did not follow the TikTok uh, challenge that you guys threw out. I'm sorry. I did fail that. You know how you find trending sounds on TikTok? You scroll. You scroll over 10 times and you keep going. And if you start hearing a sound over and over again, that's a trending sound. And you do it again. And that's another trending sound. Right, guys, we all mess up. We're not consistent, but I'm telling you, I am absolutely committed. Commitment is more important because once you commit to something, you're going to make mistakes. You're oh, going to fall man. and you are going to have to make a U-turn. You're going to fall backwards. But as long as you're willing to get back up, that's what matters. And so I'm committed to figuring it out with you guys. While you guys are out there doing your TikToks, I'm going to do TikToks. I'm going to, I don't have a link. Just tr trust me, guys. I'm going to re-strategize how I'm doing my approach because I don't have a link to give anyone. But I will tell you guys, I love watching all of your TikToks. I wish I had. Send me a DM. Literally. There's literally so many ways to fix that. Time, I was actually on a different call prior to this. I didn't have the time to pull up all of the screenshots. Mm. But when I tell you guys, I love seeing you guys participate. I go on TikTok every night and I'm liking as many posts as that I see. And I love the fact that you guys are starting to get traction. I'm noticing people are commenting, asking what that yellow strip is. Guys, if you just keep going and you stay committed, you're eventually going to become those people that you admire on social media. And like I said, when I was stalking some of these number one sellers in different companies, I was thinking million views. They don't. You know what they have? They have consistent video and content being put out to the market. And that is what is capturing those sales. And they are compounding. And that's how they're becoming the number one sellers and companies, the number one recruiters. It's not because they have a million views every video, right? No, they're getting hundreds of thousands. So maybe some get none at that moment, but they're so consistent at putting out their content. They're constantly pu putting exposure out to the market. Oh, and the one not thing I've on always TikTok. taught in our network marketing career is the person that has the most tools and product out to the market wins the game. Think about that guys, tools and product. Tools used to be magazines, CDs, v uh, VHS tapes. That's what Twan and I used to refer to as tools. You had to hand out tools. You had to give oh that and hope they'd read the magazine or hope they watch the DVD. That's what we had to work with. You guys- <laughs> I'm not consistent goes on to talk about how important it is to be consistent. What's going to win the race and how do you get content out to the market? Just be consistent. If you are dropping one to two videos a day, if you're the ambitious type and you do two a day, yep. great. If you're like me, where I'm kind of teeter-tottering between one every two weeks, I'm learning to be consistent too, guys. I tell you guys that because I want you guys to know I'm not perfect either. It takes me time to build up my consistency level, my commitment, my um, my dedication, all of that. I'm learning with all of you guys. But She's not a distributor in this company. She's making millions of dollars already. But I will tell you guys that the rule still applies here that the most content out in the market always wins because your exposure is y'all if you make if you make an overlay for your zoom call can you please not go below 24 points on your font size why do you, why why because nobody can read it What do I know? I have technical difficulties. Do you see how small this font is? And you say, well, it's very small. How big is it? Look how small it is. I know it's pixelated, but you see like it's still small when it's blown up. Give me a break. Out there, the likelihood of it. And you ask, why am I picky? Because someone that you are trying to talk to and educate is looking at this stuff that you're producing. That is one of the big issues why I get so upset at myself when I'm making videos and I have so many technical difficulties because it gives y'all speed bumps to overcome 
to learn about these multi-level marketing companies. And these CEOs get, don't give a shit about them. Ending up on someone's for you page or ending up on someone's suggested page is a lot greater when your content is consistently being put out there. So um, I'm not going to beat a dead horse anymore. So I highly encourage you guys, if you are not in the Academy of the TikToks and Reels Academy, um, I highly encourage you guys get yourself in there, learn, have fun, collaborate and enjoy the time, enjoy the process because that's where the most growth is um, experienced. The last thing I want to talk about guys is number one, the comp plan video is officially ready yep, guys. The video exactly, that you saw Sky. in Dallas is officially uploaded to the YouTube channel. It's Elamir official. Uh, go ahead and grab it on YouTube. It is, uh, it just got loaded. I believe it's ready. Twan just sent me a little card. Oh, um, it's it? up on YouTube. Uh, it's Elamir official as the page guys. Again, you can share that with anybody that wants to learn how to get paid with us. Um, we're excited about that. It's another cartoon video. So you guys don't have to get bored or anything. So, uh, we're excited to be able to release that. Um, we had to change out the voice and just do some upgrades to the video, but it's officially ready. The last thing I just want to talk about guys is as simple as this commitment. It's a lot, right? When we got, when we were getting ready to launch this company, I kind of want to just circle back to the basics of what I said was, I just want to talk about the purpose behind Elamir. I know that a lot of people came and a oh, lot of people a have five won. minute. Well, not a lot. There's, there's a five minute video on the compensation plan. People that have come, there's people that are still here. People that are teeter tottering in and out of Elamir. I get that. I see it. I understand it. That's just the industry hey, Kira. as a whole. But here's where I stand with what we believe for Elamir and what oh, our love purpose that. and our goal Kira's is. The when queen we got started over a living. year ago, the process of getting this company off um, to where it is today. And I, when I tell you guys, if you talk to the OG crew, I can guarantee you guys, they probably thought this was never going to happen, right? It got to a point where it was like, when is it launching, man? Is it even going to launch, right? Because there was just so much anticipation, but there was no end in mind. There was no set date. So I guarantee sight. those OG guys probably told you in their, or they probably thought in their head, I don't even know if this is ever really going to happen because it's taking forever. I will tell you guys, here's why it did. Because what we're doing in network marketing, I know everyone says it, not everyone means it, and not everybody has the proof and the evidence to show it. We are literally disrupting the way nutraceuticals are being done right now. And what I mean by that is that when I got involved in this industry, our original mentor taught us one thing. He taught us to be original. He taught us to never be a part of anything that could be Me Too. Not, not hating on Me Too products. There's a lot of great Me Too products out there. There's a lot of successful companies that are Me Too. But they said that in order for you to gain market share, in order for you to make a difference, you want to focus on things that people cannot duplicate. Now, I know that not every business model is perfect or exact or alike, right? This was just what we were taught in our career to always look for in an opportunity is that we wanted to be a part of something unique and different. So when we figured out this plan for Elamir, I will tell you guys this, that when we say we are disrupting nutraceuticals, we literally flipped people on their head. This is why we had so many people talking about us, whether it was positive or negative, because they couldn't believe that this tiny little strip was genuinely doing the stories that you're with. Um... Van, this product was out before your product. What is she saying? You see how perfect this product is? Okay. okay. You see how flat it is? You see how perfectly square it is? Sorry, my nails are disgusting. I was working outside. I do wash my hands, I'm sorry. This is a company out of Switzerland. You can buy it on Amazon. It tastes terrible. Oh, you couldn't sell over a thousand boxes when you open to actual customers. Yes, Tish. Soylent Yellow has been a thing since the 70s. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, this, this, the curcumin ones give you a headache. For sure. You know how much this box was? 18 doll hairs. 18 dollars. There's nine different types on Amazon. Nine. Made in Switzerland. I don't know what to say. Witnessing in the Live Your Best Life page where we're about to hit 20,000 people that are yep. watching 
everything that people are posting that are learning about our product more and more every day, more awareness is being brought about this tiny little strip. Can you imagine what difficulty you have to go through and endure to establish a brand new market for nutraceuticals? Let me just give you guys some hard facts. And if you're willing to endure that challenge, that's how you create the legacy income. Think about 40, nutraceuticals. 46 times more bioavailable. and where it started, right? Pills, the pill industry of nutraceuticals is over $11 billion annually. But that where the pill market had to be was it had to take the first dollar to be sold. It had to take the first commitment of someone to say, you know what, I want to take these leafy plants instead of boiling them in water and making you drip, drink it, right? You guys all know caveman days didn't have pills. What they did was they boiled their, their herbs in a, in a pot. Some of our parents still do that. They don't take capsules, they boil their herbs and they drink it, right? They make us do it when we get sick. That's how medicine started. Then it good, led Kira. into nutraceuticals being able to create capsules, being able to create <laughs> pills. Kate Bush being called a flop triggered half the chat. Yes. Being able to create liquid powders um, or liquid and powders, right? Imagine that industry was $0 before it came in and dominated an 11 plus billion dollar industry. That, that is what we're used to. That is what everyone is used to doing. It's easy to understand. It's easy to acknowledge because that is what is happening in the market. That is what's popular. But every so often, something new comes into place. Scam, it scam, 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 industry. in our opinion. And it takes someone with vision, commitment, tenacity, you know, strength to power through and fight against the odds of what other people think. You know, it doesn't really necessarily need to fight against um, the opinions of other people if you had waited to launch your business until you had customers or if you had removed people's ability to rank up until customers were um the company was open to customers or if you stopped your consultants your independent brand partners from making health claims and the consequences of making health claims would be an automatic and immediate termination I would have way less beef with you. And I don't even like multi-level marketing companies, but I do, again, take issue with hypocrisy, with deceptive business practices, with deceptive recruiting practices, with health claims, and then saying that the people, the people speaking up and saying, hey, you can't say that about your supplement because it's against, from what I understand, it's against... Um, I don't even know if it's against the law. I feel so dumb because I know Wendy's going to be watching eventually. But the FDA has certain guidelines about what you can and cannot say about supplements. If it hasn't been proven to impact like a structure function of the body, you can't say that it does. You can't. And why are you making all these big claims to make more sales? And so, in my opinion, you're lying for personal profit. Or you're at least being complicit in not keeping your independent contractors in check. <laughs> God dang. Because everyone is so comfortable with what they know that it's hard for them to understand change. So in the very beginning, when we decided, hey, we're going to perfect the strip market because the strip market has been around for decades, guys. There are she plenty just said that they were a new innovative thing on the field. She said it five minutes ago. And then she said it's been around for decades. We know. Dear God. Of strip supplements that are currently sitting in the market. But I can attest to this because we've purchased them. We've tried them at LaCour. So many attempts to create a supplement that could make any sort of impact has been attempted for many decades and has failed. Enter in this technology that was discovered nine years ago through our chemist, Mike. He didn't care to do Mike. consumer grade product, but when we took that relationship and we aligned it with LaCour, that's Does anyone when know magic what Mike's last name is? We developed a new way for people to take their supplements. They didn't have to pop probably the pills. They didn't, have to, drink the liquids. they didn't have to shake the powder. Guys, it takes people with mental strength to disrupt and drive the belief and the vision of doing something differently. If you're comfortable with the same thing, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But the innovative people that are disrupting the way they want to do things are the ones that have to fight through binged. the muck. Thank I you. call it the muck. 
You're gonna go through the swamp and you're gonna Why fight through the rock even on... to get to the other side to prove that there's a market for this. And I will tell you guys with the countless amount of testimonials that have come through already that we're hearing on a daily basis from people that are experiencing results, better energy, better mood, better focus, you know, feeling more present, noticing like, I mean, it's weird. I, I've noticed um, weight loss for me and it's not because the product made me lose weight. I just think I'm so focused you that I'm not eating as much as I know. You cannot say that. And even you can't say that van. She's saying that she's been again, either way is wrong. She's alluding to the fact that the product made her lose weight. Then she's also saying the product helped her be so focused that she wasn't hungry and that she lost weight. Oh my God. I normally do. And guys, trust me when I tell you, I'm not trying to lose weight. It's not me pressuring myself. It literally was just, I stepped on the scale and I saw that I lost five pounds. <laughs> it was kind of weird. Um, I wasn't expecting that. And so I will tell you guys that I have people telling me that they've lost weight too, not because of the product, but what the product has done for them Twan emotionally. And Van are both They're not private. reaching for the snacks. They're not going to the drive-thru. They're not eating the junk. I'll try to ex, let me see if I can export their, hold on. I'm just going to see if I can export their follower list. Just hold on a second. Let's see. Because if I could find Mike, that's who I want to find. Wait, he must have done a patent on this. He must have done a patent on this. Oh, what? I probably have missed this in the Discord chats. I know, I'm dumb. I've been, I have been like working and doing this in my free time. Um. Um, I must, I don't know. United States patent access. Uh, is this it? The problem is I would need... Nope, that's not it. I'll have to ask how to find it. Because if it was made nine years ago, there must be a patent on it. Or maybe it's patent pending. That they normally crave for when they're under high stress and pressure. This product <laughs> is changing people's lives. And I will tell you guys that those stories is what drives the, the purpose behind our product. And when I tell you guys, when we started Elamir, our goal wasn't to be the number one company. We weren't. But what we did was we committed to being the best in our market. We said we were going to try to do the best that we could every single day to improve by 1% to move the needle, to get us to where we want to be and be the most innovative in our market. And when I tell you guys, there's a market hey. to capture in the strip right now, the strip supplement world. U.S. patent This search. is how big it is, guys. Health and wellness US as a whole entire industry patents. is $11 plus billion dollars annually. Okay, eleven billion dollars of the whole entire market for supplement. Strip supplements is a less than ten million dollar annual market. Some of you guys might be sitting here going, "Van, that's really small. Why are we doing strips?" Guys, when I hear ten million dollars annually, you know what I hear? You've got to be kidding Nine me. Years that ago. that is only ten million dollars. So that means that we're coming in with this incredible product that has already proven itself um, with the fact that we have so many satisfied customers and consumers using our product, that we have this whole market to dominate and we are going to become the name for strip when you think of strip supplement, like how you guys know Kleenex? Why do we refer to facial tissue as Kleenex? Because Kleenex came in and dominated the facial tissue oh, market. Oh, you can mess up your trademark like that. Oh my God. Kleenex is a brand for facial tissue. Kleenex is not the facial tissue. Kleenex is a brand for facial tissue. And when you have confusion about your trademark, you run a risk of like, you run a risk of messing it up. Xerox went through the same thing. Google has gone through the same thing because Google is a search engine and people say the term 
to Google something, regardless of whatever search engine they're using. It, she's, her examples are wrong. <sighs> or maybe she's emphasizing weight loss at the moment to compete with Awakened. Ooh, Tish. Yes. Tish, I cannot wait to see your video on this. I'm trying to look up this patent right now. We call tissues tissues in Australia. <laughs> Oh my God. As so when people ask for a tissue, they don't even ask you for a tissue. They ask you for a Kleenex. Just like how That's... lip balm got oh dominated God. by the brand Chapstick. Because we don't ask for lip balm anymore. We ask for Chapstick. That's not what it is. But the brand is so well known and tied to lip balm that you refer to the brand before you ever refer to the actual product. That is what Elamir is going to do for Strip Supplement, that we are oh, going really? to go out there. We are going to pioneer this specific nutritional market. And when I tell you guys, you're capturing people's attention. I can't even tell you the countless people that have contacted to ask about how do I make my own Strip Supplement. Guys, you guys are paving the way, creating the road that people will follow. Our barrier of entry is virtually oh. impossible to duplicate because if you don't have this technology that we have the exclusivity to Elamir, I... you cannot copy what we did. You can go use Nano. You can go use Liposome. It's already been done. No one has seen our technology. No one understands our technology. This is why we're doing what we're doing with the brain scans and why we're bringing on a doctor, why we're going to do clinicals, because we want to prove that five, 10, 20 years down the road, when we establish this market and we dominate and we take it oh. over and we are the face of strip supplement, they're going to refer to the Elamir strips or access clarity before they ever refer to anything else, because that is what prove it did for the ketones market. When you think of ketones, you think of prove it. You don't think of all the other brands. Uh, there's like 50 other brands that are sitting on grocery store shelves. But anybody tied to the network marketing space, if you ever talk about ketones, the first thing that comes to mind is prove it. Oh that is my what God. we're doing. That's because are just... you are. That is because your company. <laughs> that's because your company is owned by the guy who owns Prove It. Are you serious? It's not rag or hankies as well. <laughs> oh my God. Anna. Disrupting the way things are being done. We are not doing the status quo. We are not another Me Too product. We are literally changing the game and absorption. They literally are a Me Too product because they came out after all the other strips came out. Guess what? This dissolves the same as the Elamir strips do. You know why? I've watched people in Elamir put it on their tongue and then gag on camera because they put on top of their tongue then they touch their tongue to the top of their mouth and it gets stuck i can't be the only one that's seen this in elamir dear god oh my god and we are changing the game of how we are taking in our products we are able to create these dissolvable strips that you can leverage and go out there and be the first to do it. Please? But that takes a strong mind. It takes a strong visionary person to pave the way. And I will tell you guys that it's not for everybody in the very beginning because you're going to go through the road bumps. You're going to deal with the headaches of a startup company. You're going to go through the ups and downs, the the weavy, the the the, the uh, wavy roads. Sorry, the weavy, <laughs> the wavy roads that we're going on. That you got to get used to. That every week something's changing, or every month something new is being integrated, taken away. Trying to figure out our rhythm, establishing what the comp plan is going to look like. Adding in this, taking away that, minusing this, you know, constantly changing. Because what we're doing is 12 months, two years down the road, we are setting up this opportunity so that when you recruit that person two years down the road, they are set up for a better opportunity than you were, but you are benefiting because you were the pioneer and everything has ended up under you as an organization because there is a price to pay for success. You don't get to have the paycheck before you pay the price, right? And in spite of what you guys are being told, I'm telling you guys, at some point in your career, you're going to have to make a stance and you're going to have to say, I am willing to get in and do the nitty gritty, ugly build. Think back on all of your journeys in life, not in network marketing, but in anything that you've ever done in your career, your personal life, financially, or your personal goals. Tell me when it was smooth sailing to the top. Tell me your biggest yeah, achievement. And too, did you make it easily or did you have to fight the muck to get to where you wanted to be to be successful? And I will tell you guys, if you are... And people don't even call access clarity, access clarity. The reps themselves say little yellow strip or Elamir. Outside the company, they are posted nopes. Yes. Yep. Yes, Christina.
are telling me that you never had to go through anything and you didn't experience anything negative, either you're lying to me or something was given to you your whole entire career. Because I will tell you guys, my greatest achievement never was seen until I fought through the hardest times of my life. The darkest moments. Once I got to the other side of the tunnel, I understood why I was are put through that test. Are you serious? Without it, I wouldn't have the testimony that I have today. The inspirational stories that you hear from us is not because we went from zero to a million dollar earner in one year. We did not do that. We were not overnight millionaires in this industry. The reason why you guys can relate to us, the reason why you can understand us and why we can understand you, because we've been in the trenches. We were the underdogs. We were the people that people didn't pay attention to. We were written off. We were not the people that people thought were we were gonna be you know, company owners or top income earners or seven figure earners or multiple seven figure earners. We were never thought that. We were looked at as like, oh, it's just Swan and Van. They're young, they're cute, you know, they're, they're, they're consistent, but you know, I don't think they have what it takes. You know how many times we've heard that in our career? I don't think you have what it takes to be this so many times but we fought through all of that and it gave us the experience the knowledge the know-how to be able to establish the success that we have today and so i want you guys to know for me personally where i stand with our vision and what elamir is designed to do is we want to change lives we want to change the conversation we want to be the change in this industry we you, want to provide you want to be the change in the industry but you can't even keep your own independent reps in check about your health claims you want to be the change in the industry when you straight up lie to us to use an example to push an idea in your talk that's not correct you want to be the change in the industry but you can't even listen to critical feedback that may be meaningful in how you continue forward with your company you you want to be the change in the industry you're doing the exact same things as other people in network marketing you're doing the exact same thing what change do we see? I mean, people sticking their tongues out on social media with a yellow strip melting into it. Using the hashtag hit the strip. Co-opting a hashtag called uh, that's changed the conversation that was used for something else before. What change are we seeing? I don't see any big change innovative products that are cutting edge that are disruptive that are unique that you can't get anywhere else unless you get it at elamir but most importantly we want to do wow. a different in this i industry. have to look that like back up the, christina the crap talking we don't like the negativity we don't like the bashing we don't like any of that stuff i don't participate in it i don't get involved in it i definitely don't do the drama i want to be a company that empowers and it encourages entrepreneurship leverage learn financial literacy learn mindset be be coached be um taught no, by some no, of the best no, you guys no, have no, no idea no 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 Learn the rules, learn the um, section five of the FTC Act, learn what the FT the FDA says you can and can't say about your product, and hold your independent contractors to account. You don't need to do mindset, practice the basics first, i.e. follow the rules. Don't make income claims for personal profit. Don't make uh, health claims for personal profit. Don't make health claims at all. Do not say something that the strip can do for you that has not been scientifically tested to say the strip can do. Start with those and then move on to bigger and better things. It is already difficult enough to learn how to sell within the constraints of the law. And it doesn't seem like you care. It doesn't seem like a lot of independent contractors care. That's my own opinion. It's what I've seen on Zoom calls. It it's what we saw here on this call. It's what I saw when I was in Young Living. So what we have plans for the future, all the things that I have in place, me and Tuan talk about it every night because all we think about is how do we empower you as brand partners? How do we empower you as leaders in your community? How, how do, do we, we make you guys you? better as people so that you can continue to leave the ripple that impacts generations from now? Because Integrity leaves a significant ripple. Uh, ethics leaves a significant ripple. Um... Not watering down your standards leaves, leaves a significant ripple. Does that leave a huge financial ripple for you? Not at first. I, I don't know what to tell you. You're not going to listen anyway, so what's the point? Because we are living in a very ugly time in our world where the statistics and the stats are against our young generation. 44% of teenagers feel hopeless and sad. Guys, this is horrible. If you don't understand that, that means 44% of high school students in America right now are sad or hopeless. That is what? our future generation. Imagine if you're a parent, our daughter is 13 years old. Uh, uh. 
2020, we went through a pandemic. We are still in the pandemic. I'm going to say the word. I'm probably going to get flagged on YouTube for it. Um, people are still getting sick from it. There have been so many... Um, the virus has changed so many times that it's been a struggle to <clears throat> put a dampener on it. Again, additionally, with some of the misinformation that has been spreading around the inf the internet, scaring people into not going to traditional medical care. And we live currently in the most medically advanced time in history. And I I'm not... So they've run through a pandemic. They're, um, someone, uh, George Floyd was, um, murdered and by police. I don't know the right terminology for protective language. I think that he, the, the, one of the officers who was involved was convicted. That was traumatic. That was obviously the capital. against the government again based on misinformation and someone who former former President Trump doesn't even understand the Constitution they doesn't even understand the roles for the vice president reading the votes or certifying the election he doesn't even understand the rule of law and that was traumatic. People got shot. Can you imagine one thing after another after another? U Ukraine was invaded by Russia. There's so many things going on that it is difficult to process mentally. It is understandable that there is a lot weighing on the younger generation. And not only are they trying to figure out who they are as people, they're trying to process a lot of trauma and then you are going to use this positioning to sell more of your product are you kidding me and it's not even just that scaring other people away from utilizing licensed clinicians if you have access to that scaring people away from going to a doctor to say my little overpriced in my opinion yellow strip has what you need are you kidding me i have little to no respect at this point for this company and i try to give people the benefit of the doubt i don't i don't have the bandwidth to extend any more grace to her I'm not trying to, um, also, I'm not trying to be offensive. I get a little nervous when I go live. And so, um, I'm okay. Good to know that he was convicted. There's. As a high school teacher, I believe we have a trauma to come from young people during the pandemic. Yeah. I just think it's very unseemly to use such a complex series of events that are absolutely traumatic to position yourself and position your product to get more people to buy. It... There's only a little bit left in the video. Result. She falls into that stat. I'm not saying my daughter feels sad or hopeless, but I will tell you that 44% of them can you imagine the association that she's surrounded by then if almost half of the people she's going to hang out with feel sad and hopeless? I can't imagine. It's that MLM, it's that MLM mindset too that says if you think the wrong thing that you are going to get corrupted, that if you hang around sad people that you too are going to become sad. Literally thinking like that is one of the big reasons I had very few friends growing up. Because I struggle with my mental health and I'm sad. And I was told over and over and over again, just choose joy, just be happy. Or 
Oh, you're sad again? Give me a break. You don't pick up sadness from other people. Like, work with a, a licensed clinician to, to learn how to process through your emotions and to utilize them as the wonderful tools that they are. Like, your emotions don't make you sick. And they don't... They don't corrupt people around you. She's... I just don't like her at all. <laughs> what type of influence that's gonna have? Because you are the sum of the five people you hang out with. And it's unfortunate and fortunate that my daughter has us as her parents. It's unfortunate that she's getting to an age where she's not gonna wanna be around us all the time. And my husband and I can't control her environment. And so what do we do to make it different? We have to take a stance and be the change. And it's not going to be easy because we're going through the first phase of truth of being ridiculed right now. People are doubting us. People are talking bad about us. People are putting us down. But I will tell you guys that our vision has never been stronger and united on what we want because it's not just about the dollar. It's not just about the product. It's not just about the opportunity. It's about the whole entire community that we're trying to build here. And it's going to take a lot of hard work. You're going to cry ugly tears. You're going to fight dirty battles. You're going to go into dark moments and you're going to have all of that. But if you know in your whole heart that you're truly here to make a difference, it's all going to be worth it in the end as you continue to fight forward, move, progress, and get to a point of where your purpose lies. And you fight every single day for that. Because I will tell you, the one person that I absolutely admire and at some point want to invite to a corporate event is Simon Sinek. He has an incredible mindset no, and he has been my current obsession on YouTube. I highly encourage you guys, look him up, listen to his trainings. He has so much incredible information that inoculates your perspective and your mindset. And I will tell you guys to end and conclude this call because it's almost an hour. I will tell you guys that we're bringing it back to where we started when we launched this company. This first product was des designed to help ease the pressure of life off of you guys, to help God. you feel more present with Why? your family, Why to she's... help people feel. God. Not overwhelmed on the daily tasks and to operate as a normal human being. Because I will tell you guys, the six days that I was after this product, I was not normal and I thought I was normal. And guys, I will tell you that when you can operate at a higher optimal level, you will fight hard for that feeling. Because if you understand how crippling it is to have the stress and the pressure of adult life get to you, and sometimes you're stuck in bed, and sometimes you are sitting on a couch all day long thinking about the things that you want to do, but you don't do it because you're overwhelmed. It's Imagine how empowering it is that you come in, you enter and you give a product to someone and it makes all the difference for them to be more productive, to be more empowering, to be more, um, I don't know, engaging with their family. It is a huge life-changing thing for a lot of people that are looking God. for that ease. And if you're out there and you're sharing, you're promoting it and you stand behind what we're trying to do here, then you know for a fact that not only are you building for right now, you're building for a legacy, you're building for the future, you're building for something that has sustainability, you're building a foundation that your company will be around in five, seven, 10 years. I'm looking to become the next Prove It, the next Isogenics, the next Amway, you know, the, the legacy build. I want to be at that point because when we can build that for you guys, then you guys don't have to worry about getting like losing an opportunity, right? And so for us, that's all we want is stability, sustainability, and longevity. And the only way that's going to happen is you got to have a lot of people loving our product, which is what we have. You got to help people grow mentally and get them to the next level so that they can commit, build, and start with a solid foundation. And so with that, guys, I'm excited to be a part of all of this with you guys. I appreciate all of your guys' time. Um, I go, I encourage you guys, get out there, challenge yourself, get on TikTok, get on Reels, get on uh, Facebook Reels, whatever it is, but get out there, work, and I'm excited to continue through the month of September. And I'm excited to see who's going to win all of the incentives by the end of the month and to be able to celebrate you guys next month. So with that, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you guys. We love you guys. And thank you for everything that you guys do. Wow. I don't even know what to say at this point. When you struggle with some of the things that she said, like I'm obviously medicated. Um, it makes you want to try that stuff. And it, again, nothing's been proven. The lack of empathy and, and understanding the constraints that protect the consumer and continuing on 
and then acting like you're the one being in the the lesser type of position being critiqued for no reason that's hard to process Yeah, and unmedicated meat, I mean, I lucked out that I, nothing worse happened while I was in Young Living. I will tell you, I will tell you that. Because it, going to the doctor was very much villainized they played on phobias of toxins and um that you weren't really your true self if you were on medicine and if your body was like truly healthy you wouldn't need anything And, you know, when you're suffering by yourself, people perpetuating these ideas, it can be dangerous for people who do need help. Sorry, I'm crying again. Simon Sinek, I don't, he has some interesting, um, I, I kind of like some of his videos. I'm just hoping that, I don't know if I like agree with what he says. I like some of his videos. So that's his name, Simon Sinek. I just don't think that like mindset can be separated from or should be separated from your body thanks guys I feel bad for crying I think it's just carry over from it really putting people off when I was a kid not my parents, but my friends. And I don't want to drag y'all down emotionally when I'm live streaming. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> joke time, Lynn, if you still hear no spoilers. Uh -huh. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Kira. Thanks, Fizzle Sticks. I don't know. What do you get when you show a fan video to rabbits? <laughs> I don't know, Dave. <laughs> What do you get, Dave? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God, Dave. Dave, you are... I don't even know how long I've been streaming. Uh oh. Did I quit out of. Oh no! It looks like my live cut off. 
Dang it. Mm-mm. Oh, no, it didn't. My, okay, cool. All right. It just reset the clock on my, on my deal up there. No, it didn't. We're good. The, the clock reset on my stream labs. Okay, great. My, my clock says 14 minutes, 22 seconds. And so I thought that it had cut off or something. Sorry, I've been a bit MIA. I had to send the boys off to school. I hope the wet bike wasn't too much of a struggle for your son. <laughs> Corinthians has chosen violence <laughs> for her making you cry. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it is what it is. I'm obviously an emotional person. I don't know, like, I don't know how to not get upset by stuff like that. And it's even like, like nerve wracking thinking people are gonna screen record this and make fun of me. So it's just like, it's been a mind meld trying to get over stuff like that. Oh no, it was worse that the handlebar had a bit of grass on it because it had fallen over. Um, I have to the script written out for the um, transcript spark notes for transcript one I have to work tomorrow and then I'm live streaming with cat tomorrow afternoon so I'm and I'm I think I'm gonna wait no I'm not tomorrow's Tuesday isn't it wait it's tomorrow Wednesday no, today's Tuesday. Okay, tomorrow I'm live streaming with Kat. So I'm probably gonna record the video when I get off of work tonight. Someone makes fun of you for this, and I have a cactus they can sit on. Corinthian seems to be an empathy, uh, an empath. She feels things very deeply. Y'all are the best things, Dave. Um, I don't know. I don't have any other good things to, I guess we can do the Young Living call maybe tomorrow night, if that's okay, Kira. And then I'll post the, um, the spark notes probably Wednesday morning to do a live premiere. And then, um, I need to edit this video to take out the front part. So I might turn it unlisted, so if you're not in the Discord, um, you can message me on Instagram to get the Discord link, but I think everybody in the chat is on the Discord. Um, let's see. I don't know. I think probably I should go to sleep. And I think I just listened through the whole playlist again. If y'all have any recommendations for royalty-free music to listen to, I'm trying to find new music to listen to that won't get me booted on YouTube. But I, um, so if y'all have any recommendations, I will look for some as well. Um, 
Lynn, I hope you have a good (laughs) good day at work. Drive safely or commute safely. (laughs) Um. Oh yeah, Tish. Here, let me send you the Discord link right now, and I can let you in. I think there's some questions you need to answer, but um, invite people. Edit invite link. It's gonna be it's gonna be open for one day, okay, and one use. And I'm sending it to you in um, Instagram, okay, Tish. Yeah. I just sent it to you. I can let you in if you if you're able to join. If you're not, then I will ex- I'll send you another link that's longer. Oh, I'm at work working from home. Lynn, that's the best. <laughs> oh. Yay for a short commute, Lynn. <laughs> the what Young Living versus Doterra would be the perfect time to show the art. Yes, I'm going to show Sky drew us three um pieces of art and we're going to show that um on Wednesday during the live stream so the most amount of people can see it. Christina, what is your username on I think I know what it is. I think you Christine oh Christina Beck. Okay, I'm done. Let me send a new link. Invite people. Um one day one use generate new link. Okay, Christina, I'm sending you a link as well if you want to be in there. No worries if y'all don't. I just post unlisted live streams in there and we chat about stuff. All right, just added, uh, just sent you the link, Christina. It's really good. Like the the artwork is really good, Dave. I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna really be like. It's a good time. Hopefully, I mean, I wonder if we can just have it in the background while we stream. Or maybe I will potentially cut out some of them so we have them, like, as an overlay on the screen so they can be, like, fighting each other with their essential oil stuff on the screen while we read. I think that would be hilarious. They're really good. They're really good. And, um, Sky, if it's okay with you, I'd love to share them on... Um, on my Instagram feed and tag you in the artwork and also in the caption um, on my page to hopefully send more people your way um, if that's okay with you. Oh, you can make a transparent background version? Sky, you're the best. All right, let's see. Let me see if I, uh, server roles. So the way that we protect the discord, oops, I think I was supposed to add him. Whoops. I have some bots in here, but they're to protect our account. Katie came in and and helped uh, fix stuff on our discord to protect it. So when you um, when you log into Discord, it'll let you see one channel, and then we add um, you to the hidden role, and then you can see all of the other channels we have. Awesome. Thank you, Sky. I'm excited. Lots of snuggles to Noah. Yep. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank you all for the grace and just being amazing and I will see you tomorrow for another live stream it won't be until the probably the end of the day or um I might record something and then do the premiere to do on Wednesday but we will we'll we'll go live at some point tomorrow probably late night live crew situation it might have to be earlier again because um i just need to figure out how to get some sleep so yes thank you very much for the support y'all are incredible um thank you to kira for letting us react to that (laughs) no thank you to van (laughs) 
for all the stuff she said in that video. And uh, follow Tish um, here on YouTube. She has an incredible account. Follow Mombi. Um, Mombi also Akira, aka Mombi. She has her own website. She has a Facebook page. She has an Instagram page. She does have YouTube, but she she posts there for her activism work. Like so, there are a lot of unlisted links. Um, I will try to link it in the the description tomorrow or the day after. Um, Sky is an incredible artist. She's on Instagram. I think it's uh Sun Bunnies on Instagram. And if you are a creator or I'm always happy to promote you during a live stream, I appreciate everyone being respectful so far and, uh, you know, asking if they can self promote in the chat. So, and, um, I always happy to platform people, um, who are incredible. So. Hope you have a good night's sleep and I will see you next time.